Hey, what's going on, everyone? Um, I was gonna have a video out this weekend, but I'm still battling this terrible virus, and, uh, I couldn't get any sleep over the weekend, and then when I got sleep during the day over the weekend, the weekend just flew by, so here's the video I was gonna have out before. So, have you ever wondered why there's just so many freaking Resident Evil movies? I mean, they're terrible. Why, why, why are they making more of them? And the first answer is pretty obvious. Well, they make enough money, so why not keep making them? Which is true, as uh, the Resident Evil franchise is the highest grossing film series based off video games ever and have pretty much amassed over almost over a billion dollars and will definitely surpass that number after a few more weeks of the final chapter already being out and actually come to think of it Resident Evil franchise is actually not the highest but among the top 10 highest grossing horror movie franchises of all time too so that's also got that going for it. So maybe I'm asking the wrong question. Well, maybe not why have there been so many, but how come people have watched them time and time again? Why have they made all this much money? Well, what I'm going to start with is how much money each movie is made and how that escalated over time. So, I mean, we'll start with the first one, of course, coming out in March, March 15th, 2012, which was actually many months before 28 Days Later, which I could say, safely say that 28 Days Later and then well, after that would be probably the, probably the remake of Dawn of the Dead was what really re-energized the whole zombie franchise into what we see today, like with The Walking Dead and such, and pretty much to the point of zombies becoming really fucking annoying, actually. But anyway, this first film that they had out was made worldwide 100 Hundred million dollars and the budget was 35 million so really not a huge profit turned over back in 2002 but then when uh, apocalypse came out which was the same year that the dawn of the dead remake came out and a year before i believe shawn of the dead came out so and that one had amassed 129 million dollars with a 45 million dollar budget so still kind of the same and then again and even for the next movie for extinction it made only 147 million from a, from a 45 million uh production budget and then we hits Afterlife, and this is when you can say that yes, they've made the money now because Afterlife made about two two hundred ninety six million with a only sixty million dollar budget. So you could definitely see that that had kicked it, kicked up the the revenue that it made. And interestingly enough, if you think about it, that movie actually had 3D in it. And when I saw it, 3D wasn't too terrible. And it was only a year after Avatar made 3D all popular and stuff. You can definitely say that the 3D technology definitely made it so, made it motivating people to watch. And then uh, subsequently, Retribution made $240 million from only a $65 million budget. And the newest one now has made, and only under a week has made, 78 million dollars from a 40 million dollar budget so that number is definitely going to skyrocket in the next few weeks or so so what this all means is in my opinion and the things that people haven't thought about are let's like i was mentioning before when this came out this came out literally this movie came out right before the whole zombie craze of the 2000s and you know the past 10, 13 years, 14, 15 years. And of course, I'm not saying Resident Evil started the whole zombie craze train, but it was another movie that it seemed like Paul Anderson thought he could direct and make lots lots of money off of, which he made some money off of, but then later on would make lots of money off of this. And the thing is, it endured during the whole zombie craze from 2002 to now 2017. It has survived all that time. And as you can tell, what I was saying, it was surviving through all the years of its theatrical running and even through the new technology crazes of the 3D. I mean, 3D has obviously been around for a long time, but the resurgence of it back when Avatar came out. But, I mean, these movies, the ratings are still terrible. Why would you just watch them? You I mean, you could watch a movie like 28 Days Later and Shaun of the Dead, and those movies are better, and they have a political commentary, and they're good. Whereas Resident Evil is just dumb action. But I think you can answer that question very easily by saying, well, Transformers movies. And, of course, Resident Evil, the visual effects haven't been as good as Transformer movies, but in terms of zombies and people like zombies and gore and and even a lot of practical effects with the gore too resident evil to use people just like horror and and that's why it's one of the top horror franchises and it's just because it's a stupid action movies that 
people like because because Michael Bay. <laughs> That's why. And I'm not going to lie, I, I kind of do like the series. I mean, I know the movie sucked, shit ton of plot holes, um, characters are dropped left and right, you know, they're here, now they're gone, you know, who the hell, uh, who cares? And then, I mean, this, uh, there's another point of this that I don't think that's helped the franchise sell, but a kind of another thing that Resident Evil did, the film series did, pretty much before it became the expected thing, and that's the the cool action the action girl hero the female lead action role which now it's people are complaining of that there's not too much of well actually now they're complaining that there is too much of it you know ghostbusters and shit like that and uh before it became uh, oh we gotta have more females in movies and and strong lead roles and such before that became a thing sjw's before sjw's even freaking existed you had a, a cool female lead role actually you think about it, she was in uh amelia jovich was in uh the fifth element, fifth element, which kind of another similar thing. She lost her memory and is a ass kicking badass. So you know, even that there too. But but a huge long running franchise like this started with a cool, you know, badass female role and kept her in it. You know, say what you will about her acting and other things, but you know, she's pretty she's pretty hot. You know, um, for what the 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 Matrix moves and stuff that she does too, and that leads to another thing. This the Resident Evil franchise is like the Matrix with zombies and. How does that not sound cool? I mean, the effects are kind of dated, but, you know, Matrix effects are really dated, too. So you have a movie that's just a movie series before Transformers that did what Transformers did. It was a stupid, mindless action movie with with plot holes and, of course, some bad acting and, obviously, all-around questionable directing. But, of course, people still bought the tickets and it made all the millions of dollars that it has. And it's reached its conclusion now with uh, the final chapter, which, by the way, um, going back to the ratings of this the series as a whole, uh, not not surprising to me, but uh, on Rotten Tomatoes, this Resident Evil the Final Chapter has the highest rating out of all of them, which not a surprise because I think people are just happy it's over finally, and maybe it did wrap things up not too terribly. So, all right, so if you made it to this point in the video and I didn't make a lick of sense, still. Here's a little bit of a recap for you. So, why the hell have there been so many Resident Evil movies? They're terrible. There's pretty much the main and only reason. They made almost a billion dollars. And that led me to the question I should have been asking, and why is it made so much money in the first place? And there's a few reasons for that. For one, it pretty much began around the beginning of the whole 2000s zombie hype that's been going on the past 15 years. The reason why it survived all this time is because it's been a stupid, mindless action film like all the Transformer movies have. And of course... The effects weren't as good, but a lot of people like horror, especially if the horror actually isn't scary. They can think that they're watching a horror movie when they're... Most people can think they're watching it when they're really not watching a horror movie. And people like that dumb action and the fact that it's literally the Matrix and zombies is fucking awesome. And also that, you know... The character of Alice is a really cool, badass female role character before the SJW started complaining about it and before normal people started complaining that it's too forced now. And that's pretty much why they've made so many freaking movies. Yeah, that's really it for this video. I just wanted to kind of discover in my own way and discuss with anyone who's listening about why the hell have there been so many Resident Evil movies? And why the hell have people been watching them and still watching them? And, you know, to the final chapter, and when the hell is Transformers going to end? When are those gonna, movies going to just stop? So, yeah, that's it. I want to hear what you guys think. These are the reasons why people, you think people have watched these movies, and why they've made more, and, you know, clearly they, they want to end them, so they're done now. So, I mean, I guess they're not too greedy of it, they just wanted to make the movies that kind of sucked. But, I mean, they didn't, I mean, that wasn't their intent to make them suck, so I want to know what you guys think. Uh, if you're excited to see the final chapter, if you even survived any of these movies, let me know. And uh, I'm sorry for this video, just if this video was just all over the place. I'm just coughing non-stop, and I could barely get things written on here, so that'll be it. And uh, next week, stay tuned for a Resident Evil 7, read the game, of course, the 7, uh, review for that coming next week. May not be on the weekend, but a little bit after that. So, I guess I thanks for watching, everyone, and uh, see you all next time. Have a good one out there.